it's Melissa Hennig with rawpaleo.com and I'm here for to tell my birth labor and birth delivery story I don't I have not quite known how to share it yet because I don't want to disappoint anybody and I was definitely planning on a unassisted home birth um, and it didn't work out that way so I thought I would share what happened and it's hard for me to share because there's a part of me that's embarrassed and there's a part of me that doesn't want to to take away from home births. I would 100% back a home birth and try for it again if that's ever the case. But um, sometimes life has a different plan. And also the beauty is that I trusted my intuition and my baby's here with us. So, oh, oh and he's just pooped. <laughs> Um, he's he's a good eater so I was 16 days past due like 42 42 weeks and three days or something and I had I was feeling fine my whole pregnancy was a breeze it was really easy I was still hiking stairs at the end and walking for miles and doing anything to try to go into labor and my body wasn't going into labor and then it started to, um, I started feeling some contractions on Sunday night. That would have been October 22nd. And it was like, yay, oh my gosh, this is it. And Chris, my partner, came home with the roses. We were so excited. Our home birth, you know, had we had started some type of progression here. I had been waiting and waiting. And, um, oh... So I felt contractions and the only thing I didn't feel was the baby moving. And so I called my midwife and I said, you know, like, I'm in early labor. You don't have to run over. I'm timing the contractions. It's, I think it was, I was having them every 10 minutes actually, but it wasn't that painful. And I said, but I'm just a little concerned because I'm not feeling any movement. And so she said, you know, eat a big dinner and because you I always feel a baby move I mean he was moving non-stop anyways the whole time but when I ate it was a dance party so um so I and she said eat a big dinner and get some rest because tomorrow you're, you're gonna have a big day ahead of you you're gonna be delivering a baby you need rest so I um uh I ate dinner protein it was organic chicken and I felt one kick and that was at 7 p.m. and so I was really aware that I felt one and I told Chris you know usually there's so much movement when I eat and I'm a little concerned because I got I felt one kick but I felt something so I went to bed and I, I woke up in the middle of the night about one in the morning and I still had not felt any movement again he's very active like babies have days and nights mixed up so at night he would get really active and during the day my movement and walking all around um, would put him to sleep so I ate, ate, ate an apple at like one in the morning and I still felt nothing and then I drank some ice water he's got my necklace I drank some ice water at um, like 3 a.m. And I still felt nothing. It was radio silent, and I was really concerned. I thought this is strange. I, you know, what should I felt movement the whole pregnancy, and all of a sudden it's a zero. So I did. I text my midwife at about five in the morning. I've never texted the whole pregnancy because I didn't have any issues. I didn't really have any any big problems or anything to text. So. I said, you know, I'm still having contractions, so you don't have to, like, come over and stay, but can you come over and just check a heartbeat? I'm not feeling movement still. Last kick was at 7 p.m. So she was literally over by 5.30 a.m. She's like, you know, I, I ran over because you've never called, so I, I was concerned. And she came in, and we felt the heartbeat, and it was on the lower side. He's a boy. The myth is that when the heart rate is on the lower side, you're going to have a boy. So he was in the 120s the whole time. And we couldn't get any movement, though. We were going to do an extended uh, test where, uh, you know, we, every time he moved, the heart rate should go up. And we were going to chart it. And Chris was all ready to take it. But we couldn't do that test because we couldn't get any movement. And I had eaten that morning. So I was feeling like, all right, what's going on here? His baby stopped moving. 
And so we, we talked about it, me, her, and Chris, and we decided that we were gonna walk into the Flagstaff, Arizona hospital and just get an ultrasound and, and look for some movement on the ultrasound since I really wasn't feeling any. And we walked in and we said, we're home birthers. We're, we're on our way in and we're on our way out. I'm having contractions. We're gonna go home and birth this baby. But I just want to get an ultrasound because I am not feeling movement and I'm concerned. And so they took us, they were really nice and they took me right in, they hooked me up to monitors and they got a heart rate and it was, it was on, every time I had a contraction, it would drop like drastically. And he was like, they were telling me he was distressed and I still didn't want to, oh, it's okay. I didn't want to believe anything because, um, you know, I just don't, I'm not into hospitals and everything they say is kind of backwards anyways. Hold on, I just don't want to get this on the, on the screen here. But we might need to feed him. Um, so so that was one thing. So during contractions, his heart rate was dropping. And, um, oh, he's kind of crab. <laughs> he's crabby at five and a half weeks. He's pretty demanding. Um, and so they came in. So, the, so they weren't going to give me an ultrasound right away. But since the, the heart rate, they noticed something was happening every contraction that they came in with the ultrasound technician came in and she tried for 45 minutes and she could not get any movement oh honey and you know I got up and drank water and peed and emptied my bladder and did everything to try to get some movement going on so 45 minutes nothing so they're getting they're getting nervous the heart rate's still dropping and I said well but we gotta go home we gotta go home you know I was telling Chris we can't be here because it's just oh I am not a hospital person and being there just felt so wrong and you know they came in they said we're gonna have to do a cesarean this is pretty serious we can't find any movement oh the other thing was there was zero amniotic fluid left so he didn't have any fluid in there no movement and the heart rate was dropping so it was pretty serious. It was really scary at that moment. They said, you, you're going to have to go now. We have to get him out right now. And so I said, no. You know, I still was like, we can't do this. I started shaking and crying. And, and Chris is like, well, let me go call the midwife. So he went and he called her. She's 500% about home births. And he came back and he's like, we got to do this. And I still was like, no, please. I don't want to do this. You know, when you're really into alternative medicine and not into allopathic at all it's, it is quite a whirlwind to have to get rushed into surgery like that so I had to do it I really was no choice I was scared he had no fluid heart rate is dropping and there's absolutely zero movement so those three things were, were is what happened and so I went into surgery and Turn, so like so he was actually so he came out he wasn't breathing which is normal a lot of times babies aren't they need a second um, and it, but he was covered in meconium which is poop because he was so overdue he was supposed to be on the outside but he had the swallowed poop and he had it in his eyes it was all crusted and it was I still just got some out of his ears his toenails everything was just brown and green and you know, I, Chris had the mask on because we were in surgery and I couldn't see anything. I'm looking up at him and his eyes are just glued, glued on the baby. And I'm going, what's going on? What's going on? Because, you know, it's a medical procedure once you're in the hospital. They took him and they rushed him over to this table and there, there's like five doctors around him and scrubbing and who knows what that was going on. But I heard him cry. And so I said, he's crying, he's crying. Give him to me. I want my baby. You know, it's really torturous when you're stuck there on this table. And one, I knew nothing about it because I had never even really researched cesareans because I wasn't going to have one. There was no way I would have one. And, you know, so anyways, that they finally brought him over and they said, we got to take him down to the and I see you, the Niku, and we need to get him on oxygen. He's not breathing because he swallowed the poop. And, you know, I think I needed to take the baby immediately and, and have him skin on skin. And he would have been breathing just fine. But they made such a huge deal because once you're in the system, and I was laying on a table with no control, 
So he he's fine, he recovered, he's strong, he's healthy. I knew the whole time I was pregnant that I was gonna have a strong and healthy baby. I kept saying these kicks are out of control. He's constantly, like my stomach would come out an inch. His foot would just come all the way across. And, and he is strong and he is healthy, but there is some glitch. I don't know at the end, and the doctors don't know, my midwife, we really don't know, why didn't I go into labor at 40 weeks or 41 weeks or 42 weeks? I just kept going and actually when, when I had the surgery, uh, the doctor measured and I was only one centimeter dilated. And he was so stressed being in that poop with no fluid and heart rate dropping that I don't, I don't know if he would, he wouldn't have made it if I didn't immediately, we had to get him out and it was pretty serious. So we were in a whirlwind of a, a kind of a walking nightmare. Like what are, we were in the hospital for a couple of days going, what are we doing here? What is this, is this real? Are we in a nightmare right now? And so the moral of the story is I trusted my intuition. I knew something wasn't right. You, I didn't feel movement and I, I always feel movement. Oh, honey. Babies need to be burped a lot. Maybe we'll get a good burp for the video. <laughs> um, so that's my story. I, I am definitely oh, much less judgmental and open-minded and Western medicine has a place when there's an emergency because I definitely was one that was really against any type of C-section. I would never in a million years think that this is how I would be having a baby. So I feel a little disappointed. I do feel disappointed that I didn't get to birth him vaginally and he didn't get to have the good bacteria, but I'm taking a ton of probiotics and we bonded really well. He's breastfeeding really well. There's a lot of cesarean section babies that don't bond, but uh, you know, he's always on me and feeding and it's it all it's it's okay and he I mean it's all it's amazing he's here that's the most important part but you know there's definitely a process of questions of why and what if and this and that you know that I kind of have to I can get stuck in that and caught up in the past and I do want to move forward and learn and grow and just be thankful that he's here and stay present because it is when you go through that you can get caught up in, in thinking about it um so yeah that's my story the more so if i i don't know if i'll ever have a baby again but if it happens again and my body and me personally if i went that long overdue i would go in and, and check fluids and check some things but the whole thing is even if they did give me the pitocin and they started inducing me he was so stressed out in there that it, he couldn't have child childbirth anyways is so stressful on a baby that that plus all the things going on with him i don't know if he could have handled a vaginal delivery so that's the story and i would love to hear your input if you have any comments if you know anyone that's gone that far overdue and why and or of your own experiences and how you've healed from them and the trauma and the whirlwind of it. And, you know, listen to your instincts, trust your gut, trust your intuition. If something doesn't feel right, go in and get it checked out. And that's it. I'll see y'all soon. Bye now. <laughs>